Hi, welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen. Welcome to another uh, Painted Simply lesson. Today what we're going to be doing is doing this wonderful fly catcher and uh, some yellow roses and some daisies. Some of my favorite subjects. I get a lot of letters from you asking me to paint more birds and more roses. And it just because there's just so much life, there's so much animated life when you put in these beautiful, uh, these beautiful birds, and there's so many wonderful birds. I love the flycatchers because they have such expressions on their faces. Of course, I've painted the, the titmouse and little chickadees and uh, the beautiful cardinals, both the male and female versions of all of these. I love them. And uh, so I'd like to share, continue sharing some of these birds with you because they're just a heck of a lot of fun, especially when we use the uh, painted simply. And what I mean by painting simply, we're going to use just a couple of brushes and a couple of colors. And here's the colors that I'm going to be using. Matter of fact, I just finished teaching a seminar using these colors. And uh, uh, I have up here uh, five uh, base colors, or excuse me, six base colors. And these colors, are, of course, have been in this palette for a long time. So this palette's getting kind of mucky. And, I, of course, I just finished, like I said, a, a seminar with it. But I have a cool red, which is my uh, red violet. A warm red, which is my Naplo red light. I have my Hansa yellow, which is my bright uh, yellow. It uh, is more of a neutral yellow. Some people see it slightly cool. Some people see it slightly warm. It is uh, just uh, just warm of neutral. And uh, Thalo blue, which uh, a lot of people think blues are all cool, and they're not. These blues, Thalo blues, ultramarine blues, are warm. But, you know, when they're used in conjunction, especially with colors like the uh, Naphthal Red Light that is so warm, they appear slightly cool, but it is slightly warm. Then, of course, a black and white that I'll use to adjust the, uh, the values of it. We'll get into a lot of this painting a lot of these colors as we go and a paint it simply has a lot of lessons for you to uh, to refine your skills uh, with those colors I'm also going to use just a couple of brushes I'm going to use a three quarter inch brush which is what I love to manipulate the backgrounds here and uh, then I have a flat which I paint a, I'm going to paint a lot of the flowers with I my favorite brush is the filbert and I've used it the filbert on several hundred painted simply lessons and then I started to incorporate the flat uh, when Global Art Supply started manufacturing the flat, just because the flat gives you a different angle to your brush, a different look to your flowers, and as an artist, uh, you know you want to there's you, know, you want to roll through these rounds and these flats and these filbers just to keep from uh, from generating some habits with it if you do happen to have some of those habits, and so I'll I'll use uh, usually I'll use a six on flowers and stuff and a four uh, with the flower uh, with the birds, but uh, you can use uh, just a six for all of the painting or just a four for all the painting. You don't need uh, both of them. But if you do have both of them, that's kind of a nice idea. And then for my favorite painting brush of all, for all the birds and all the details, is the uh, watercolor round. And I do all this little detail work on it. And one of the reasons why I don't use a liner anymore is because the liners tend to be too perfect. I like the, I like the fusion brushes because they, um, they don't give it quite a, a perfect line and that's what I'm looking for is you know in rose modeling and stuff even when I started to do my casual telemark I don't I don't want as much as a perfect line I paint today a little bit what we call relaxed I like the style to relax I like the whole painting to relax I like the whole feeling to relax and this this will help me paint a more casual of painting that a more casual painting a painting that has more life okay so I relax my uh, colors in my palette there. I relax everything about my life. I get color all over me and color all over my hands. And it's a real, real happy day. Um, let's go on into the, some of the painting. Now, this one here, I had base coated it here with kind of a lighter gray. And you have the step photos for when uh, the step photos in the lesson are the ones that I used when I painted this painting here. What I'm going to do is paint into the video. I'm going to paint the same objects. They're not going to be exactly the same. I'm going to paint the same rose, birds, of course, and daisies here. So you can see that. But uh, I'm going to do it on just a slightly different background. And I'm going to uh, follow what I feel today. This is very important with all the prima. You paint what you feel. If you want to paint something that has a lot of life, don't get focused into these step photos. You know, this, paint this, paint this, paint this, paint this. Those are there only for reference, not for you to copy. And I feel that in decorative painting, in decorative painting field that I've spent, you know, the majority of my uh, 40 years of, almost 40 years of painting career, um, 
I feel that the decorative painting industry has gone too much into copying. And that's all we do is we put on patterns and we copy and we don't paint enough life into a lot of our pa in a lot of our paintings. Now there's nothing wrong with copying. Let me just get that out of the way right away. There's nothing wrong with learning by copying. But we want to approach all of this a slightly different way and get life. And if you want to paint something like I'm doing here, you can put on some quick sketches and then turn it into yours using the, the photos, using this video, and using um, uh, all of the lesson itself as reference, not as copy, 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 okay? Just if you need an, an idea about where to go next. So you could start the bird first. You could start the rose first. You can start to, you know, anywhere onto the painting. And you can have slightly different colors. So which I have here. I start, I'm going to start this one out with a medium white, slightly more yellow. And then I'll adjust the color over a little bit from where I'm going to go. So let's get into this uh, right now. Now, uh, so I'm going to take here, I'm going to have some extender. Uh, extender is what we use, of course, to, to slow down the drying time with my three-quarter inch brush. And I might want to make a little bit of that lighter gray color here. Um, and any kind of gray, of course, you can always start with a black and white. But, uh, you know, in, in a lot of this painting, grays are just any kind of real tone neutral. That's what we really call grays. So your gray can slide slightly blue. It can slide slightly to the yellow or the red side. Gray is just a, is a, slight, is a toned color, and, but it can have a bit of a hue to it, okay? But I'm going to start out here. I'm going to take some black and some white. Let's take a little bit of our blue in here. I'm going to have a lot of the blue background uh, into this one. And I like the color to be slightly warmer, so maybe I'll add a little bit of my yellow. And, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer, if you don't know where you go, add a little bit of everything. So I'll add a little bit of my uh, red to this, and I'll get this beautiful kind of gray color. And if you want, and this is a little bit onto the blue side, if you want a little bit of color closer to what I had on the original one, um, then you can add a little bit more of your yellow and your red. That is going to give you uh, up here towards you, uh, you know, the gray that uh, is closer to what I used on the original. So here's a little bit more of a yellow into that. That's a good one right there. Good gray. Then I'll lighten it up a bit to where I might want to see the, the, uh, the painting, <coughs> which is right about in here. That's pretty good. Now, you have your graphite lines on, and I've sketched them on here. And so when I put some of this color on, what I'll do is I'll go uh, just lightly over these lines, maybe wipe it out, back, wipe it back just a little bit so that uh, I don't cover up completely everything that I'm doing there. But uh, I'm going to add some extender to it, which will help thin this out. And then I'm probably going to lighten this one up just a little bit more too because I like to... Today feels like a little bit lighter day, so we'll do that. And I'm just going to come in and start putting that in. And I'll model this, too. Like, I'll pick up a little bit of more of my yellow here. And uh, I'm just going to add some extender to this to really thin this out quite a bit here. As I go around the plate here, I like that color. That's a good color. We'll get a little light into it here. And I don't need all of my pattern that I have here but uh because i when i started i started freehand or i'll make a quick sketch especially when i do the birds i like to make a quick sketch so i get a nice uh you know kind of an area or an idea where i'm going to go or placement of his position his wings his head so, so i'll put some, some of this color on now i'm just going to uh, just move this back a little bit and i'm going to let a little bit we'll let a little bit of the yellow show through on this one and the monitor won't pick up too much of that, but we'll let a little bit of that yellow show through. And I can lightly here see my uh, my pattern lines. And I'll just take a little bit of this extra color that I have and just push it through the rest of the painting. This allows you to put your hand in that and, and carry this wet color around the painting, which uh, happens to me a lot. So I'll push some of this around. And we'll take care of this rim and stuff later on in the painting. So I got a color on here, and I like the color to vary. Now, how much is on the surface? You want just a light coat there on the surface. See how there's no puddles of it? It's just a real light coat. I'm using the global colors, which are in the lesson for you. These colors have had uh, extender mixed in them, and they've been uh, for, actually, these have been in here for uh, several days. And um, they have about a four or six hour drying time on it, maybe a little bit more. And it all depends on how thick you put the paint on. 
if you uh, are if your colors are drying on you, then you are are putting you're not uh, putting on enough paint or you're not mixing in a little extender as you go. Usually I tell everybody, you know, your colors, just like an oil paint, they're painting throughout the day, you need to feed it. It'll tighten up. You need to feed it. You need to loosen it up. That's going to happen. You'll need to do the same thing with these kinds of colors too. So the extender is your friend, and you might need to do it a couple of times throughout the day. Now, let's uh, before we get going here, let's make ourselves a blue. I'm just going to take this blue color. This will be a blue background kind of color here. I'm going to put that there, and I want to go more towards a like an ultramarine. The thalo blue is more of a blue green, so I want to go more towards the um, a blue green, or excuse me, a, a, a blue violet, which is the ultramarine. So I'm going to put a little bit of violet in this up here. I'll just toss it right into my gray until I get a color I kind of like, and I'll lighten it up, and we'll take a look at that. And uh, yeah, that'll be a pretty that'll be a pretty nice color. And maybe adjust it and put it out. Sometimes your eye changes just a bit. And let's go just a bit more violet into that. Feed it with a little extender here. And let's just casually apply this right back here. So I'll use my brush in many directions. When I paint Olive Prima, uh, I like to paint the brush in many directions. And uh, in the original one, what I did was I didn't go quite all the way out to the edge because I like that blue back there as a, as a quick statement. So I'm just going to put it on here and then wipe it back and leave the edges here. Going back to some of my original color, and we call that vignetting. That's the, the term that we use for that is called vignetting. So uh, I like to, uh, to leave this a little bit vignetted, and... Um, I'm going to just strike through a couple of places here. Right back here by his head, though, I want it a little smooth so his head will pop out here against some, some heavier color. So if you look at it right here, having some heavier color right there, his head will, will pop out. If I had a bunch of streaks right there, his head would compete against those streaks, and those streaks would actually, uh, you know, will not allow him to come forward as much as I want him to come forward. So we'll put that uh, in in there and we'll streak this out maybe you want to have a little bit of a a, a, a green down there now green is a, a blue of course we know it as blue and yellow but on this palette that i like i like to go yellow and black and then slowly introduce the blues to it until i get some green and i'm gonna uh, introduce a little bit of this green right in here and streak this out again, using the same thing. And we'll we'll uh, you know we'll we'll paint these flowers after we get going here. And like I say, you can start with anything. You could start with flowers. You could start with the bird. I'm going to start with the bird today. Uh, a lot of times I like to start with the bird just because it's kind of like the center of interest, and I like to paint it, and then that sets the feeling for your painting. Okay, so we'll put some of this out here like this, and we'll. Let it get a little casual. That's kind of nice. And I just lightly see my pattern line through there. Some of you might not even be able to see it. I just lightly see it. And for me, that's great because that's going to allow me to paint this one with the expressions and stuff that I feel today without covering it up. If you want your pattern where you can see it more so you don't get lost, just make sure you transfer your, your line very heavy with graphite. You might even consider going over it with a pencil. And sometimes if you go over with a pencil and you put a little bit of paint on, those things smear out. And if that happens to you, don't worry about it. It all covers up. You just put on more paint, okay? Just put on more paint and relax because it's a, it's a fun, fun technique. All right, now when we start the bird here, what we're going to do, and I'm going to move over here just a bit so you can see my palette a little bit more. I'm going to leave some of my background out here because this is the way I, I like to paint. I'm going to come in here with the bird and I'm going to create an undertone. Now I have some of this beautiful gray, and <clears throat> that's probably what we're going to use here as an undertone. So I have some gray, and um, the bird is, is a flycatcher, and this particular uh, species of flycatcher has... Uh, yeah, a lot of gray undertone, so I'll, I'll restate that gray. And I love the grays that come from black and whites, blues and reds, stuff in there. The red really kind of warms it up to a brownish gray. You can see that. And then I'll take some white over here to the side, and we'll kind of look at this, this undertone of this. Maybe a touch more red here. I like 
I love that. In the palette, in the painting, in the instructions, we say that we get a brown from two parts napla red to one part black. Always remember that. That's all you need to really remember in the proportions. And then the rest you're going to model and adjust. I also like to have a little bit of my yellow in here. And you can see that yellow gets rid of that red real fast. It takes it almost to this orange, warm kind of uh, brownish color here, which is a color that I really love the paint on him. And you'll see that color right in here through a lot of this area and so it makes a real nice undertone when it's slightly lightened up so I'll step right over here we'll model in a little white and this will make a nice undertone uh, you know for him and when I'm painting him like this like I said uh, and we'll pull his we'll make a tail here down like that we'll just get that right out of the way there and you can see that so his tail will go in there right somewhere but um, I, I use several techniques in painting birds, and one of them is that I paint an undertone or light color, uh, an, a color that you see through the majority of body. Now, I'll use short, choppy strokes. A lot of people will say, well, you want to use shape-following strokes, but I don't always use shape-following strokes on the bird. A lot of times I do, but I, I look at reference photos of each bird as I paint them, and sometimes, you know, they puff up and they go in all different kinds of angles, and, you know, Painting some of those feathers, uh, you know, in those angles is um, really, really a nice thing to do. It gives them a lot of character. And uh, so I like to, uh, to paint in those birds in some of those feathers with shape following strokes sometimes. And sometimes I like to give them a little bit more character uh, into the painting. And so uh, that is for um, us to look at each bird and decide how we want to do it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I want to just pull down here, short, choppy little strokes. That'll build his neck area. We're going to tap right up around the eye a bit here, and then we'll go down into his wing. And I'm just kind of using this undertone of him to just kind of set the areas. And again, if uh, you are afraid of losing pattern or something, then just base him in a little bit lighter color and uh, or a little bit thinner not lighter a little bit thinner in color and um, you can uh, then manipulate him from there so we'll just drop some of this in like that that'll be good sometimes I like to come in and state the, the roses and everything in here and you'll see that in several uh, you know DVDs and stuff where I'll come in and put some color in and I just might come in here real quick and uh, state some color into this into this flower. I'll take some yellow over here, and I like to tone the yellow with a little bit of the reds. That's a little too much, so I just add a little more yellow. Let's give and grab a little bit of our browns here, and and it, it, you can, if it looks uh, slightly green in it, that means it's got a little bit of the the black kind of color coming in there, and that's okay. That's okay. This we're just going to quickly state some of this this color in here. Like maybe I'll have this rose that'll sit right in here. Having some of these colors on really kind of help you see and get a feeling for the painting and where you're going to go. And I like to show you the techniques I use when I develop a painting for the very first time. You know, I, I have a feel, I, you know, my feeling of, of the entire painting industry is that uh, we don't teach the process of creation as much as we teach the process of copying. And so I like to, now I like to paint with the process of creation and teach the process of creation to my students. And so they can see how I created it. So they don't, they're not afraid to go out and create their own. Now I'm going to come out into the back area here and just create a little bit more area or a little bit more colors going on because I'm going to have some other flowers sitting out there <clears throat> in that area. So there's my undertone of my bird. Sometimes I'll do a little bit more. Sometimes I won't. And uh, that has a good feeling to him right there. So I think that's probably about enough, that area. Now I'm going to just slide right up here to some of my shadow colors, which had a little bit more red. They could have a little more black, a little more of the brownish color into them. And we'll come in and we'll just quickly uh, make some statements, uh, you know, of some shadows. Now, He's going to have a little point of a darker wing into the back back there, which we're going to want to state. And let me come in just a little closer for you. There we go. And um, then we'll uh, uh, 
take and we'll put some of this shadow which will come right back down into this area which will be part of his body his body strokes right down here and we'll just drop that in and see I'm painting in reverse pulling down with my flat the small this is the number four flat sometimes I paint it in um, you know more of the the reverse like that and and sometimes I'll paint it with a forward stroke so I like to vary the strokes now I'm going to also mix up this a little bit more brown which is the two parts red one part black and then I like to poke in a little bit yellow I don't always like to use the you know when I paint a bird that has a lot of character I like his feather colors to constantly change so here I'm going to mix it up this slightly more brown and let's drop a little bit of that it's a little warmer color you know, give him a little more character in there sometimes when I have some of these colors I'll just go ahead and drop them in you know into some of the flowers here too just a little touches of them somewhere Sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. But it's a good a good little habit because it, it, it kind of carries the colors around. You'll pick up his colors, you know, traveling through the uh, flowers as well, okay? So there's all kinds of ways. And like, again, like I say, I don't want you to copy all the step photos. I don't want you to get into a copy mode of painting this. I want you to understand some of the techniques. So one of the great techniques that an artist uses is if you express a color, use a color, go carry the color throughout the painting. That's a that's a good thing to do, a good habit to get into, okay? And I'm constantly, some of you uh, here that I don't always show it on camera, I constantly carry a paper towel in my hand and wipe my color if I feel my brush has too much color or something like that in it. Now I'll come in here and I'm just going to state a little bit of the areas of the bird that we do want to decorate here. He's going to have a couple of sets of feathers before he goes down to his main flight feathers here. So we'll set some of those areas in. Just a combination of the grays and the, and the um, uh, browns and stuff here. And we'll come in and use some short little uh, strokes here letting just a little bit of that streaking come through here for the top of his head. Sometimes I'll do this with my small round, depending on how much uh, interest I want to grab the bird. But it, it's nice to do an underpainting like this with this little flat, because it keeps the, you get some streaks, which are going to be suggestive of flowers, but you also keep him kind of soft here, and which gives you room for more uh, or future development here. We'll use some, let's go over to our gray here. Let's just use some change the gray a little bit and just use a few little shorter uh, choppy strokes as you get into his body here though the strokes can become a little bit longer here um, because they are moving more through his body and they're getting larger larger fe feather units it's just like a rose the smallest r petals are inside the rose and then they get a little bigger as they go out we'll put a couple more strokes down his tail here We'll do that right down here like that and in here. Okay, that's good. Maybe uh, he's going to have some light, a little bit more light. Like this is going to be right where his leg is going to go. So we'll just put just a touch right in there. I got a little dark. Now, one of the things I also like to do is go in and set the eye. Now, sometimes I'll, uh, I'll set the eye right at the very beginning of the painting. Sometimes I wait a little bit. Uh, but I want to set the eye. This will give his character and stuff to his eye. So I'm going to take my little four here and my round, my little round number four. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to short, short, choppy, tap in the uh, shape or the, the area of his eye here. He has, the flycatchers have somewhat of a larger eye uh, there. And then I'm going to take some of that black and I'll express it to the lower part of his beak here. Short, short, just kind of short tapping strokes here. Kind of express the lower part of his beak. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of my gray color right with that black here, which will lighten it slightly. And we'll express the upper part of his beak just a little bit lighter here. Just a little bit lighter. And tap that right there into um, the um, into the edge of this other one here we'll just we'll have just a soft uh, definition between the the two of them there okay now I'll take some of the brown color that I have and you can even 
model the brush with both rounds. Modeling is you tap the color into the brush. Don't mix the color into the brush. There's a difference between mixing a tone and modeling a tone. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to start some shorter strokes right around and I'm going to try to preserve a little bit of that light color as I get up and around that eye. And I'll tap some of this in. This will break up some of the browns and it's a slightly different brown here. Slightly different. And I stroke from the point pushing down on the round like this. I love that. It gives, gives nice feathers to the bird that way. Here like this. And we'll put some more brown right up here. It's a nice tone. Now, to, to make the bird's head round, what I'm going to do is just kind of go around like this. And um, then slowly short. There'll be real tiny little strokes of feathers up here. And then slowly go around his head like this. And short stroke this. So I will do some contouring strokes, shape following strokes here. Pulling out like that. We'll pull down like this. And we'll pull some down. Get a little bit of that movement down like that. Okay. And so I will start some of those. I want his head here a little bit wider out here. There we go. Out like that. That'll be a good shape for him right there. And um, I'm going to take just a little bit. I'll just tap into some of that gray. And we'll put some, just some strokes, some movement strokes of, for his body down here. Down like this. There we go. Get a little bit of that in there. That's good. Now we'll take a little bit of our lighter gray in here. Maybe even, let's just, let's warm that up. Let's add just a tiny bit of yellow here to this. Change it change it a bit. I, I just look for, you know, I don't try to copy exactly what I've done before. I just, you know, I'm going to walk you through what I do. I'm just going to like change his browns. Do you see that? Just changing his browns up. So I'm not always using exactly the same color. This is what's going to give him the interest. And I'll just streak that back and forth. And really the secret to this bird, I mean to the interest of this bird, is this brush. This brush is not a perfect uh, liner stroke. It's made with the fusion hair, the same hair that we do the roses and everything else with. And so it, it, it doesn't do everything absolutely perfect. It blurs the line slightly. And, you know, you, you're painting into an area, but it takes on its own character. So this makes it... it uh, extremely difficult to copy something using this brush, but it also adds such wonderful life to the painting that you cannot get with the, one, the synthetic brushes that are out on the market today. You can't get it with that. They're they're too too perfect. Okay, so I absolutely love this brush, this this fusion brush, and for the last two years, this is the, what I use for the majority of my painting. So now I have that. I have him set in there like that. I pretty much like his his shape in here. I can raise the point of his wing up here just a bit higher, I think. So I, I will do that. And so this is where I look to see, okay, do I need any more correction of shape? Because now what I'm going to do is a process of building uh, building him. I'm not, I don't clean my brush. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white. I'll set it over here. And I like to right away come in and say, okay, just with the tip of the brush, I'll tap in, just a tap in, not a perfect little shine for where his eye's going to be. And, it, of course, this brush doesn't put it on perfect. And so what I do is I then pick up just a touch of black, and I'll paint it into the position that I want to, that bird, you know, to have. And uh, I'm going to restate that a little bit lighter, a little bit heavier right there. And then I paint it off shape with, I just come back and paint it off shape here with a little bit of black. And then I'm going to very carefully tap around, starting right about down in here. I'm just going to tap around the eye ring. This is the small ring that goes around his eye. Some birds have a very definite eye ring, and some birds have a real soft one, depending on their body color and the type. So I'm, but I'm going to come around, and it's, it's nice to leave that nice and open like that. Um, and a variation of it going around like that. That's going to give him a lot of character uh, to the bird. And I'll make sure I have a nice brown shadow around that. And if I get anything out of shape too much, 
I will use this brown to help correct the uh, the shape here. So I like that, and then we'll brown right up here, deeper brown. Just kind of tap that around, and we'll pull down just a bit. Down like that, so I get some of those shadows now. You can also use these to pull some shadows out of his feathers. And like I say, uh, you know, you use the the, the uh, photos and, you know, we'll use the video here for reference of it. Because I'm not going to paint it following exactly the same um, as I did in the other photos. Sometimes I will paint that with you. But I my feeling now is, boy, we do way too much copying. And what I... You know, what I did in my seminars this year with my students is I didn't give them the lessons until the end of the day. And a matter of fact, a couple of the things, I didn't give them lessons. I gave them a couple of step photos, and I walked them through the process of creation. And if I, if I give them a lesson, and I give them a lot of step-by-steps and a lot of written material, all they do is go into a copy mode and start to copy and, you know, all the questions I get is, this doesn't look like yours. How do I make it like yours? Well, you know, I don't have a copy. I don't have, you know, step photos when I go paint something. And so um, I, you know, I have to have this, this process. And so that's what I'm trying to teach you is this process. And so, you know, really the best way to learn is you learn a process. You don't copy. So that's where I'm going. And I'm trying to teach my students some new ways. And give them some confidence and it's working so now i have that in and i have my eye the, the, his little eye ring in there and i'm going to pull out and soften some of that eye ring just a bit here and there so that uh it varies and you can come back and state some of that area again there just some of that and now i'm going to just tap in i'm going to take that color a little tap in some light right down here in and around his face we're going to do this a couple of times will be the shorter feathers. So I'm going to want to just tap around those and short little choppy strokes using just the tip of the brush. And this will make little, a little uh, stippling almost area here. And I will come in and pick up some more white. Kind of just use the tip of the brush. And it, what you're putting on here is the tip of the feathers that you see in here. So I will just put some of those in just where they go up over the beak, where the beak's going to come in. Sometimes I'll take my brush here and ink a little point of it and just put in some of the, the a shine for the difference between the, the upper and lower beak here. So I'll put some of that in there. And uh, then we'll go more towards our browns here. Put some of those right up here at the top of his head and we'll stroke some shorter browns here up over his head. Now, if you get too much or you, you paint out a, a little bit of him here, um, I'm going to go just a little more reddish here. Change that tone a bit. Uh, if you get too much or, you, you know, you put on too many, then you just take a little bit of your dark and you go back through it again. You paint back and forth through it. He has some feathers that are going to come out this way, out of this area, here, come down. And I'll use this lighter color like this to kind of slowly stroke up into that shadow that's under the eye ring and start to soften that into place. And put in a little more light. Now I'm going to um, come up. Matter of fact, maybe I can lift this up here so you can still see the palette a bit. I want to come in just a little closer so you can see some of this detail work really big. Okay, there we go. And uh, I'll come in and use uh, tap the color into your brush like that, and use just a point in this just the tip of this brush. This is what I love this for. It'll create this little feathery movement, and the more you tap the softer these little feathers will become. So you don't want to get rid of all the interest. So don't tap it too many times. But And I constantly go back, pick up more paint. Constantly revisit your palette here. Okay. There we go. Just like that. 
build that color down. We'll create some movement out here with that. I love to create that movement. Back and forth. We'll create some here. Up across here. Here, like that. And uh, then I'll go back and restate or revisit or restate any of my like little darks. Now he's got some right up in here that I really want to bring out here. So I'll push that dark right back in there. So sometimes I'll put light feathers on and then go back and restate the darks, the darker feathers in him here. I'm going to do that right now. I like that contrast here up about that eye. Just pulled some of that out there like that. That's pretty on him. We'll restate his shadow right back here. Stroke or two. So even the dark, see the dark strokes like this coming back into there will suggest his feathers. So I'll suggest feathers with lights and darks both. We'll put a little dark here. Just like that. So his head stays a little bit darker, which I want on him. And we'll just touch a little bit of that dark through the rest of the painting here. There we go. And a little bit out through there. There we go. Now we'll come through. I'm going to put a little more yellow into this right over here just to warm this up. As a matter of fact, sometimes I'll come in and just toss a little yellow into some of the areas here that I'm going to paint just to change that up a bit, just to model and get some more colors. We'll tap into some of our whites here. And I'm going to build some of his light. I love the flycatchers that have this real light color on their neck, this variety of flycatcher. Here, so I'll just paint some short choppy strokes like this and let some of that just go right over where he's going to be his neck here. And I'll build that a couple times. Now sometimes I'll, I'll state it in first with my flat so it's softer. And sometimes I'll just paint it like this with my little number four. It all depends on the size of the bird that you're painting and how much interest you want to give this bird. How much feathered interest you want to give him in comparison to some of your... Um, you know, flowers that you're going to be painting in conjunction with him. And we'll just put in a few more strokes of light here. Take this up a bit. And I'll soften through that with maybe a couple strokes of the brown. So I'll go back and forth between the light and the brown there. And let's put a few strokes up onto his neck here. Just a bit of that. A few of them sideways here, a little different. That'll a few, a few counter strokes of feathers, because you know they have these feathers, and they they don't always go exactly the way the bird is. And so a few counter strokes give him character. And I like to have a few of those that just go a little different, that give him some of that character there. That's nice. We'll pull a few of these down, little wispy ones up on top there. And let's go to more of a yellow, warmer gray. And uh, we'll go right down onto his body here. Leave just a bit of that shadow showing so this neck feathers will come off. We'll come back and restate some more neck feathers there. And we'll pull these down. And if we get too much, that feels that's a bit heavy. I'll just wipe back just a touch. We'll come out. We'll change the direction out here just a bit. There, like that. And on on the original one, I was very simplistic in putting some of these out here. I didn't really build up his body feathers too much. And as we get down to this rose, we really don't want to. So we're just going to start to skip it around like this. 
just to put in some of that movement and maybe soften it a bit with our finger. Just because we're going to set him behind the rose and we don't want a lot of feathers, so we want to keep the feathers all up in this area on him. Okay. And I want to I want to bring his head back just a bit more here. So I'm going to take some dark and set his head back just a bit more. Back like that. That's good. And we'll just take some of this light color. Just model that into the brush. Pull that back like that. That's good. And maybe a few uh, touches of some additional white here. Oh, that's kind of pretty on him. Each bird will have a little bit different character if you just relax and just enjoy painting them and just go through the process. They'll each have a little different character, which is what I love. Don't try to copy them. Just kind of paint some fun character into them. Because each bird in nature is different. And when you paint like that, then your birds just become so wonderful. But if you try to copy, they become stiff little things. Again, you can use stuff for reference, but don't copy. So, and maybe I'll drag just for, I'll drag a few little feathers out across like this, the body feathers across the wing. And again, that goes counter to, you know, the direction of, of something, and then that gives him more interest, okay? So we'll just pull across like that. And that'll give a lot of interest in there. And we'll come up close to these others, but... We want to leave just a little space there. And if you if you get rid of it, just take some dark and stroke back up into something. So sometimes I'll take a little dark and lift back into something like this, back and forth. And that still will preserve your uh you know your light areas and shadow areas there. So and we'll just just lightly just body feather this up a bit. And let that sit there. Now we'll take some of the edge of the light. We'll come back here and just with the edge of the brush, we'll stroke on some of his shorter flight feathers. So I just take my brush and if I pull it through like that, see, I pick up a little corner of that white, which is what I really love to use to set, you know, some of the looks of flight feathers. Just that little corner of light because it's almost like using a, it's, well, it's an edged brush of light is what it is um i don't want to say side load because i never side load i haven't side loaded in probably four or five years i don't side load don't do any tricky brush loads just some very simple brush loads this is painted simply we paint everything very simply but you know with painted simply you can't copy so you got to get you, you know you 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 paint the the uh expressions of stuff and the fun of of something you don't try to copy it so I'm gonna put that in there like that that's beautiful boy he's sure coming out nice I like how he's coming out didn't give him just a bit more of a touch of light out there to his tip of his of his beak I like that and uh, maybe just a touch of character to the eye ring right here that's a bit much, so I'll back that out. There we go. And let's take just a little black and open up that part just a bit there. It gives such wonderful character to their eyes. You just take a quick little stroke there. Now let's take that edge again. Let's come back here and let's give the longer look to his flight feathers. And if you get too much here, then just take some of your dark. I hit that just a bit and we'll just stroke through to remove some of that light. And the longer stroke here will make it look more like the flight feathers. And we'll take a little darker, darker stroke of it right up here underneath. Okay. Just like that. And uh, sometimes. Uh, when I feel like I'm getting those a little too streaky and I'm I'm kind of getting those a little streaky, I'll back it back out with like my small flat like that. And that'll 
put just a, a, a real nice look of, of a larger feather right in there and soften that look of the round. And again, gives you that nice variation. Uh, that's what was, which is what I want anyway. So we'll take that, we'll get some of that red and bra uh, black there and a little bit of that yellow, a little bit of that brown color. And let's get that in there. Stroke a little bit in there, like that. And he has a little yellow onto his rump right here, so we'll just put a little bit of that in there, like that. That's kind of nice, and that goes very well with the painting. You can push more into his tail, but I leave his tail kind of soft because it's going to go down there by that uh, um, down there by that rose. Let's go back to our around with a little bit of white, and we'll just cross over a bit here. Again, we'll, we'll cross over just a bit to give his body feathers and his flight feathers a nice little uh, crossing there. Not so heavy that they, they interfere with each other, but I love when the feathers come across like that. I think that's so nice. And we'll give just a little bit of a light feather here indication where, where his leg will be, and I'll give just an indication of his leg here because um, we're not going to paint any specifics in there at all um, <clears throat> and we'll just clean up back through here a little blue and browns stuff uh, we might even drop a little green right back up in here and you can back paint you can do what we call in, in the painted simply negative paint in any of the areas in there with that to kind of push it back and and uh, get some greens there into him. But we use what we call negative painting. That's painting the background color now up and in some of these areas to, and that, uh, to clean up rather than trying to make him, you know, absolutely perfect and clean him up, which will cause him to grow and grow and grow in size. Uh, we use some back color here like this. And I'll just take some yellows. Let's come right down here. Take some yellows and a bit of black here. Yellows and a bit of black. We'll make a nice dark little green. Let's even toss in a little bit of our browns. And we'll come in here and we'll set a contrast color. And I'll just I'll, I'll blur the edge. I want to blur the edge down in here so he doesn't compete against that. We'll set this contrast color down in through here of a darker green. We'll take that right into our rose here. Mix that all up. We'll take some of that dark. Let's just come right down to our greens here. Now, I I love to paint flowers. And when I'm painting flowers like this onto a painting, I, this is where I really won't use a pattern. And so the flowers will come out a little different. I realize that about myself. Um, I don't copy flowers each time. So I paint them all a little different. I paint what I feel with them. So you'll have some step photos to give you some ideas of the process. You can watch me here with this as we go into the painting of these flowers. But i got to paint what I feel if I want these flowers to, uh, um, you know, have their own life. And, and you know, which is going to be an expression that you're, you're going to try to capture each time. And so every time you paint it, they'll be a little different. I like it. Uh, maybe just a little more touch of a light right in here and that is the feather here and that's kind of pretty on him that's kind of a little uh, nice little uh, fly catcher there I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of kind of a yellowish tone right up here by his neck he's a little brown to white and I love that little bit of yellow that shows up in there so I want to get a little bit of a yellowish tone right in there on him and see what that does to him just kind of sparkles that up just a bit there get that little bit of yellow right there just add so much I feel to him and maybe break that black is a little solid so we'll just break that with a little stroke it's a little light so there we go just breaks that up and there that's a good that's a good painting now I'm going to put down my round number four for a while for the painting and I'm going to uh 
quick on my flat. I'm going to go to my six. I do like to paint this with the six. So uh, you can paint these with the four. I have a lot. I paint some really large roses with my number four. So you can use an alternate one. Or you could use that four if you want, or you can jump into the six. I'm going to paint them with my six. Four or six. Um, you know, it doesn't make, really make too much of a difference here. Um, I'm going to step back just a bit so you can see some of this. A little bit more of the palette. A little bit more of the flowers. And... Uh, We'll come in and we'll have ourselves some fun with the flowers. Now, um, I can I can use, I want to get some good harmony here to my colors as I paint these flowers here. So I'm going to want to keep these yellows right up here with some of my browns and some of these colors. These make beautiful colors. You know, get those beautiful browns. So let's just make a run up here. The red and black just makes this beautiful colors here. And you can just get into some of your yellows right in here like this. And you see these beautiful tones. Sometimes they'll go a little bit orange, which means it's heavy into the red. Sometimes they'll go a little bit green, which means it's heavy into the black. And you can you can control that very easy. But sometimes I like these cut these tones here. Slightly to go greenish and slightly to go to the uh, to the yellowish color there or to the, the orangish color. So I love these tones that I can I can put into my painting here. And I'll look at that and go, wow, here's some pretty, pretty tones here for my roses. So maybe I'll come right in here with this kind of, oh, that's a pretty tone. See, isn't that a beautiful tone with him right there? So it's slightly on the reddish side here. We'll just come through. We'll set up the center and down in through here. Sometimes I'll come in and put the cool color in first, like a red violet, or I'll start into the brown. Here I'm just going to push this in and, and put a little tone. You know, you, you, it doesn't make a difference. And one of the things is it doesn't make a difference what color you use first. You're painting on a prima. You know, for many years I painted decorative painting when we did a base coat, a shadow, and a highlight. We're not doing that. We're painting on a prima, which means we can paint shadows first and go to the lights, uh, to the mid colors and to the lights. Uh, or you can go lights and work backwards. There's all different kinds of variations of the a la prima. But the most important thing is to remember, you can go back and forth. You paint what that needs. You don't follow this, this uh, technique or this process of it that makes it look stiff. You're an artist. You paint what it needs. So dark colors can go on top of light colors and vice versa. So relax it. So you know, if you see me with a with a step photo painting in some reds, some cool reds into the center, which is what I do a lot on roses, um, and then the next time I put some warmer tones out or some slightly different tones into it, and then go into the shadows, it's not important which which one do you do first. And it's actually better if you just say, okay, here's the rose. I know a rose is going to have shadow down there. I know it's going to have cool. Put it in, but don't follow, you know, don't get locked into doing the same type of technique all the time or else your flowers will never have interest. They'll always be the same. So keep that in mind as you're, as you're doing some of your painting, okay? I'm going to cool down, though. I do need a cool center. I'm going to take some, some red violet and tap it right in here into some of my browns, and I'm going to push that right down into here. This is my cool color. I'm not going to let it express too much uh, heavy to the red violet because that will uh, um, not go with the bird as well because he's on to those slightly warmer tones. And I'll push some of this around like this to create uh, my shadows, okay? My shadow area. There, that's good, okay? Maybe I'll come over here with some of these tones, these browner tones, tap a little bit of this in, and I'll come over here and state this into this rose over here as well as as you can see you know we're uh we're 50 minutes into the painting and this is over here where i had touched it in earlier is still very wet very nice i don't have to worry about it at all whoa that hit that brush fell right out of my hand and hit that area there we'll take care of that but i'll put that shadow uh in there any of that kind of stuff ever happens to you you can just wipe that out real without a problem and and restate some kind of blue back up there and uh, or I have enough blue up there I could push it around but I'll, I'll go grab a blue here I'll show you and I don't need it to I if I have a mistake or something like that happens what I'm going to want to do to to help hide it is to to just go grab another blue but not make exactly the same blue so we'll make a slightly different blue here this slightly different. 
I'll just put a little bit of it in my brush here and we'll come back and state that through here like this and work that through. Let me grab a little extender on this, tap in a little bit of the light into it, slightly different, and I'll work that through and then I'll incorporate that into a part of the painting here. There, just like that. So I'll incorporate that blue right there in the part of the painting and all of a sudden that just be it adds more interest to your painting here when we get all done. So this blue moves and models through there. And so I do that a lot if I drop my brush, you know. So I, I feel it just adds so much to the painting anyway. Okay, now <clears throat> I'm gonna turn the gaze of this rose down just a bit more, which means I'm gonna lower this side of it here, which is gonna turn the rose down a bit here. Okay, down like that. That's good. And uh, now I'm just going to start to build, start building the rose. Now this is a type of rose that I paint a lot in painting simply. I take some of my model color, I'll put model in a little bit of light. I'll come in and strike, strike here the light color. Sometimes I'll pull it down or I'll lift it up, what I call lifting it up, reverse painting it down like that. And we'll put a few angled petals out like this. Here, there we go. So I, and I constantly touch into that white and reload that white, in, you know, into the brush, and I'll state it here. I watch the rose in conjunction with my bird. Now this bird has a tiny bit more feather contrast than the other one does, than the original one I painted does. So I might put a little bit more here into the roses this time. We'll come into the centers here. And we'll put in some petals. I use just a tiny corner of that white. Drop that in. Drop that shape in. We'll just lightly brush smaller little curves into the center of the flower. Smaller little curved shapes here into the center of the flower. Like that. Okay. Little edges. I would use just a corner of that brush to kind of sketch these, these petals on. And I'm going to want to brighten this up, so I'm going to grab some more Hansa over here. Step off to the side off this way. Let's get that underneath here just a bit more. There we go. Step off just a bit more to the Hansa on this side. Maybe a bit of white. And uh, we'll come in and so we'll say, okay, there's going to be a... And I'll sometimes just do this. Just plop in some heavy color in there. Okay. Pull that back just a bit. Just like that, and I like the edges of this not to be absolutely perfect. Sometimes I stroke these, you know, and they make beautiful stroke roses, and sometimes I wiggle my brush like this so that the edges are a little bit different. And we'll just drop some pet, we'll drop some of this down here like this. Just wiggle a little bit and drop it down here. We can use your hand to create the motion in and out of the rose itself you know, in towards that bowl, like that. Um, or you can add some strokes to kind of curve it in, which I'm going to want to curve this one just a bit here. There we go. And build this. Build this one in like this. That's a nice pretty shape coming to this rose. We'll just model the brush, pick up some more colors, model the brush, and take some strokes coming in and you know you can add some shadow sometimes I'll add a little reddish tone in there as I'm getting down to the shadow so this rose this modeling changes just a bit here we'll model a little bit out here some of our more tone that warmer tone I love that you know it's heading to the shadow there we should put a little bit just a just a little bit of red violet into the into the tone down here, which helps that cool down. So we'll put some of that in there and tap that around inside the flower here. But then again, you know, it, it's like the other things. I don't, I'm not trying to copy what I did before on the other roses because that will make this rose appear stiff. So I'm using it as an idea and just putting in tones. I want to get these back areas back here though faded away. I want to fade them away. So I use just a little bit here of uh, a color, and I don't use the edges. Don't use the edges. Let the edges fade away. 
let's come back in here and let's strike a little lighter tone a little more white right on the edge just strike it try not to set up too much of a shape and let's just push in and out here with some of this color now this is very light right here so I lost some of my my definition there so I'm just going to tap into some of this even some of these colors here just a little and I'll paint from the shadow out here and this is where I like to to wipe my brush several times uh, as I'm painting this and maybe pick up a little more shadow because if you if you stroke keep stroking it you'll just drag white in and lose all of your shadow there then you can restate some of the shadow on the rose Roses like this, and, and I love to soften this with my finger. I love to just stick my finger right in there and soften it. Roses are something that I have to now. I see the shape, a rose, and let's talk about the shape for those of you who haven't seen. Yeah, I go through a lot of painted simply and a lot of the lessons on painting roses. So if you've ever had a problem seeing roses, you're getting this DVD kind of out of order from some of the earlier ones. It's okay. You can still try this. But if you want to learn more about roses, I have a lot of DVDs on roses. But a rose is just a set of three circles. We have the smaller inside throat of the rose. We have the bowl of the rose and the outside of the rose. And since this rose is turned down and, you know, going down here just a little bit and I want to um, uh, turn the rose, I am, I'm going to oval the shape just a little bit. But I will also put a few of these decorations out here. But you want the, the petals out here a little softer. Here. I want to expand this one back here a little bit, but as I apply any kind of touches up here, I let the, the petal strokes themselves be very, very soft, and the ones that I do right up in here, I let you see them a lot more. But I'll paint back and forth between shadows and lights like you just saw me do on that one. Um, I, I try not to set up too many habits with some of the roses that I paint uh, and because it's easy to set up these habits with them. And then you don't get these beautiful variations, and we want to have variations to them. So, and then I'll use little edges of the brush to draw more perfect petals. So, it's just nice combinations of it. And it's, you know, to paint beautiful roses, it takes a thousand roses. So, yeah, it's going to take a while for you to completely understand and paint beautiful roses. But I'll use the edge like this. I'll draw on this petal. Sometimes I hide the edge of this bowl a little bit here with this stroke here. And um, then I'll lift out to make this stroke a little lighter, trying to preserve that deeper shadow in there. And before I come close there, I will lift it out a little bit here so I don't lose completely that shape. And we'll drop in some more edges here, like that. Drop these in, like that. So you get you a nice little shape here of the rose. You want this to kind of round around here just give the impression of some other petals coming out like that maybe uh, define this edge up just a bit more that's a bit light we'll define that edge now sometimes I work a, a rose like this to completion and sometimes I'll step out and do some of the other ones before I completely paint this now that type of thing is better to actually uh, it's one of the ways in which I do a lot of painting now is what I do a lot of uh, before I finish this one, and you might even see it in the step photos, I'll go out and state a little bit into some of the other petals and some of the other flowers. I love to paint that way, uh, and that's the best way to develop a design. So when I develop a design for the very first time, I tend to go put some color in all the roses and put the color in the birds and a few leaves and then slowly bring it into focus. And that's a good way. Or if you, Or you can paint like this. Painting one at a time like this, though, is kind of dangerous because it will tend to make it stiff. So, um, but uh, sometimes, you know, we know where we're going on this painting. We have a sample kind of where we're going. So it's uh, uh, easy to fall into this painting it one at a time. Maybe I'll put a little touch of some light right out here, right? And this will really help that edge of that petal advance and the back of that bird go back there. Now, before I go any further, I'm also going to step right up here. Let's come right here. And let's take some of our Hansa here. Let's take a bit of our black. This is how I love to go to the green. But since we have a lot of blue in the background, we should have a little bit of blue into this also. And let's make ourselves a darker green here. 
mostly haunts in black. Haunts it with just a touch of black. Let's, let's mix in a little bit of our uh, a little bit of our um, extender into that, and let's just shape up a few leaves. And I love to just I love to put on some color and push them right into the background there. And we'll use this to shape them up a bit. Uh, we're going to have a daisy sit right in here. So we know that. We'll put some more color, push some of this color in and out. I love, this is the modeling of the background. So I love just to kind of sketch around with the greens like this. Let's drop some of this in here. And model this up like that. And there we go. Model this in like that. And we'll drop some of this in. This, this, this just gives the impressions of some of the leaves that are going to go around. We'll add some other daisies up there, and then we'll add some accents into it as well. Um, but uh, let's go right up into here, down or down in here, and draw in a leaf. It's here now. If this with this painting, I wanted you to your eye to come right in here, which is what it does. Your eye to come right in there and then to uh, soft focus going out. So I'm going to add a little blue to this just to change this up just a bit. Um, and that's what I want. So I don't want to get too much going on out here. So I'm just going to do some quick leaf sketches here. Some ideas that, okay, here's some leaves sitting here with this, uh, with this guy. And uh, with this rose here. But just some ideas of it. Maybe a little bit more blue and black will create a little bit of a shadow tone. We'll drop a little bit of that. That's contrast. That's good contrast. The darker you make it or the more of this you use, the more contrast your painting will have. See how it lifts that rose and shoves that leaf back. So sometimes I do a lot of this. Sometimes I use just a little. You know, put in as much as you want. This is contrast now. And... Boy, the birds are, it's early morning here, and the birds are outside, just outside the studio, singing away. Hear them. They're great inspiration. I love living here in Pennsylvania with all my birds, all the different varieties we have here. And they're just such great inf inspiration for me. Now, uh, throughout the lot, rest of the painting here, I keep it very, very soft. You can add some more contrast if you want to pop some of these areas. But I really wanted your eye just to come in and see bird and this rose. And then, you know, move out through some of the softer daisies and stuff. So I kept it pretty soft. So, uh, and that's what I'm going to do. But if you want more, you can certainly jump in there and add some more. I'm going to go back to my yellows. I just pinch wipe my brush like this. I'll neutralize that green by going up by some of the browns. And then down into some of the yellows here, the brighter yellows here. And uh, a little bit of white. And I'm just going to come in here and lightly sketch like there's going to be the edge of this rose over here. Okay, let's go over this way just a bit. Maybe pull this down. Here, there's the edge of a rose there. Let's get just a bit more yellow into that. Here we go. And around. We'll shape that inside of that rose a little bit. See how my brush just moves into the circle shapes here. It's constantly moving into the circle shapes of that flower. I want to soften that inside of that flower, though, because this rose is to the outside. So I don't want to have so much going on on the inside. I'll put on a little bit of that cooler red. And we'll just go through with some of our softer yellows to keep everything here soft. So a few streaks, but not much. And uh, we'll build down. We'll take some lighter yellow here. And just build down the sides of this. Maybe up. Just so we start to start the shape of this rose. But again, we keep it kind of soft. Maybe a little brighter strike right up here. There we go. A little brighter strike right there. Go. And uh, a little more tone down in here in the body. So you know, we're going to paint this rose, but a little softer than the other one there. So it just sits back here. And you can strike petals up like this, which make it look like they, they're falling down into shadow. And I want this to really kind of fall down into shadow down here. This is going to go right in here. Somewhere in there, these two 
the bird and this back shadow are kind of coming together. So we're just going to give just the impression down here. Not be specific with our painting of this rose. Just the impression of stuff going on here. There we go. And you can lift out some shadow tones here. Maybe a bit of cool. That's a bit more contrast than the other one, but that's okay. I like that. Today's a different day. So I, I liked how that came out right there, so I'll do that. And maybe I like this one right like that. It's a little different petal than on the other one, and that's okay. I like what it's doing. That's what makes it beautiful each day. That's what makes painting fun each day. You let it be a little different. Don't copy. I don't like the copy. I mean, it's copying is not fun. I mean, you, it's... As we as we get into this allopramin, I find this really fascinating. I, I paint a lot of allopramin with my students, and so many of my students now I ask them, "Could you ever go back to that base coat shadow highlight?" And they said, "If I had to go back to that base coat shadow highlight, most of them, majority of them, would say, uh, you know, I'd stop painting." Um, I haven't really come across too many students that ever want to ever go back. Once you start this, you never want to go back because it's so, it's painting. It's truly the, the uh, nature of painting and what we all uh, kind of think painting is when we're younger and when we, you know, our, our artist sits down and paints these paintings. And this is the kind of feeling we have when we paint all prima like this, very casual and light. I'm just going to push a little color down into here. We'll hide some of that stuff going on by letting this just model right down in there like that and there you go see how that just kind of incorporates right down in there like that okay and um we'll come out here let's grab a little yellow green and let's just put a an idea of a leaf or two out here like this you know maybe there's some right out here and we'll just use our finger to soften them there we go use our finger to soften them and say, boom, there's a, and we'll keep it very soft. We'll just use the brush very lightly here, which we'll use the, the brush itself, the fuchsia brush, the, the hair on it is very, very soft. So if you lift the pressure on it, it goes almost to like a little mop. So it's very soft. I don't like to mop. I don't, I don't believe in mops. I think, uh, you know, mops are, are, um, uh, and I don't want to upset anybody by this, but, I feel that mops are a, a brush that uh, is used to um, to push in this stuff. I got a little fly right here. <laughs> I use the I use a brush that's used to um, uh, to soften something. Okay, it softens an area, and but it takes away your brush skill. Yeah, you can anybody can drag this thing over this and soften it out, but it takes away the feel of your brush. The uh, your uh, the artist's ability it takes away the talent the, that you have to develop to use your brush in a light pressure to a brush to a harsher pressure. That pressure, the pressure that an artist uses on their brush, is is so important to the ability to paint, and you need to develop that. And if you go out there buying all these different varieties of brushes, you'll never develop that. Now we manufacture a line of brushes, and I have a full line of mops in there for people who like to use it. But I never use them, and I don't believe in using them, and I don't recommend the using them. But there's a lot of people that do and have a differing opinion than I do, and that's fine. That's what that's what art's all about. But I want you to consider that. I want you to consider, you know, not using something like that, so that you start to develop, develop the sensitivity that's needed in your brush to go through and paint something like this using one brush. Anybody can do it. You just take some time to develop the sensitivity. But you'll never develop that sensitivity if you go out and buy another brush to try to make something easier for you when you really don't have to. So let's take some of this color and let's come out and just add a little bit of movement out here of some other stuff. Now that one got a little wild, so I'm just going to fuzz that out into some green. And uh, let's just add a little bit of movement here for some other strokes. And soft and keep some of those soft here. 
We'll add some other daisies and stuff going on there in just a minute. Before I go adding those, let's just take this and let's just add a couple of movements or ideas of stems here. In like this and down like that. I like that feeling there. And these guys here. I love this kind of, I have a little bit more warmth on some of this. And I, by a tiny bit of, of the yellows and browns in my in my brush. And I like that. Here. Let's just grab some of this. We'll just push that out there. We're going to fill up in here more roses and daisies. We have a yellow shape here. So let's give the idea that there's going to be a, a yellow rose in here. And I'll just push the yellow into that. Maybe we want to and let these just kind of incorporate and lose their edges. And let's take a little red. We'll push the center in on this. Just use your finger. You're way out here now. You want to give just the impressions of stuff. Just use your finger. And we'll soften. And then we'll draw here. Uh, draw the edge of this. Here. There we go. Draw just the edges of it, the ideas of this. There we go. And just like that, just give the idea that, okay, here's a rose here. And we'll cover it up with some leaves and push some stuff in there. But take some of that extra color off my brush. A lot of times I'll take the extra color. You can see right in here. Just take that extra color off just with the with the towel. I love to paint on these towels and now a lot of my students love it as well because it just it doesn't you can strike the towel real quick and not stop your feeling or your painting feeling that you have going. Let's just soften that just a bit. There we go. That's pretty good. We'll put another uh, one kind of suggestive back up over here. Come around here. Draw the edge here, like that, just suggestive of it, suggestive of the shape. Model some of this around in here, because this is just all, this is just roses back in there. You're filling up your garden. You're filling it up here. Let's just take a little bit, just pull a, put, grab a corner of that white, and just suggest the edge here of the rose, maybe a little softer touch back here, okay? And, uh, but just a suggestive shape of it. Maybe a, a stroke or two down like this, so you can create a little bit of movement to that rose. So it's sitting back here, but let's not do too much to that. Let's just leave that down in there just like that. And let's get a little orange, a little warmer orangey color in there. Right down in there like that. I love that kind of warmth of that, that orange in it. That orangey color goes so well with him. So that's good. Now, into some daisies. Let's have some fun with some daisies. I'm going to take some of my brownish color here. And, of course, your browns is your two parts red and one part black. We add some yellow into that. We'll add, and we'll just tap all this in here. Let's get some of this brownish color. We'll use this to kind of set the position. There's going to be one right in here, right by this, right by his tail. So let's set some of that. And I can also add some greenish kind of color to that. I, I model through that. So sometimes I'll let this greenish color also come into that. That's pretty nice. We'll have uh, this one. It'll come right in here. Okay, a little bit towards the, the daisy. I mean, towards the rose there. We'll set one right in there. And those are the powerful ones. Now I'll just lighten that color in my brush. Just reduce the amount of paint that I have. And let's come right in here. We'll set one there. And uh, we'll set one right in here. Set an idea of some. Just an idea of some other ones around. One right in here would be good. Just kind of using the, the original painting as an idea. Maybe a turned one right there. And we'll take some green color. And before we go paint these, we'll give the idea of the... Um, uh, stem lines here. There we go. There's a stem there. A few other little stems coming out. Draw a few of those out. I'll tap some other colors in there. Let's get some other darker green. Some maybe a little red, violet, and black, which is very cool. 
but we've got to be careful not to get too much contrast in those. So let's just tap a little bit in there. You're just looking for color variations. Sometimes you can go right into the yellows and greens. So, matter of fact, let's just tap a, a little bit of that greenish yellow in there. Just I'm just looking for some variation. I'm not putting the highlights in yet. I'm just modeling that color into those daisies there. Now into the daisies, we're also going to want to have, we're going to want to carry some of this blue color that is into our background. I'm going to carry that into the daisies because I'm not put it into the, the flowers yet. So I'm going to take some of this blue that's right up here. I'll drop it right down in here by my bird colors, my browns of my birds here. Um, and then we'll model that up with some white here. Maybe model with a touch of yellow. We get these beautiful modeled colors now, these various grays. But I want it slightly to the blue, slightly to the blue side here. And we'll use that here. We'll start in just in and out here to put in the shape of the daisy here. So you see I'll paint in and out like this. And we'll put a crossing shape there. And I'll put the daisy in. Slightly blue tone so it picks up. See how it picks up some of that uh, sky color down there. Okay. Let's come over here and put one in here. Just, and the blue just stays soft. But, oh, God, I, I just love painting these like this. In and out with this beautiful fusion brush. It's just incredible how it paints these. It's, you can try all day long with a synthetic, and it'll never give the look to the daisy that the fusion does. Fusion is just perfect for painting these casual daisies like this. But it takes some... It takes a little bit of practice to learn how to use the light pressure. And if you have a bucket of mops out there, you're not learning how to use your brush, the pressure of your brush. So you're not learning how to do these types of techniques. You're just switching brushes to make it easier. But you make it easier, you don't you don't get as much interest. That's just my little my little thing. If you want to paint like this, there are no shortcuts. There is no you know, shortcuts, and you gotta, it takes a little practice, and you do have some tools that'll make it better. But, you know, you uh, also need to, to uh, go through the bit of learning how to, the pressures of the brush. That's, that's our, that's our main instrument, is our brush. So you gotta, you don't need a ton of them. So I'll just push a little daisy right there, up there like that. That's kind of pretty. And, um, I'll use this softer here. Let's get some of this just kind of real soft out here and just kind of quickly state some daisies out here. Just boom, 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 boom. Quickly state these out here. Real soft ones. We got a real soft one here. There we go. And uh, so we got that one, and that one. And uh, this one I made a little bigger than what's on the original, and I kind of like it, the bigger one there. And let's, uh, got a couple of smaller ones out here. We got to do, just push out. Here, like that. Let's model these whites. Can go back, pick up some more. Model it again, and push out like that. That's pretty. Let's keep this one very soft so he doesn't compete against the bird too much. So we'll just do something like that. Just a little mark right there like that. It's a pretty soft little daisy. Then we'll come back again, pick up some more white. Let's come back through. And add some lighter ones. And I'll paint both ways again. There. That's pretty good. And uh, the other one, I cut a petal, which I do like. Um, so we'll pick up slightly more white here, just right onto the tip here, and I'll cut a couple of strokes down like this. That turns that daisy petal a bit. And let's just... Sometimes I'll strike the tips of these to keep the tips a little bit lighter. Since this one is a little bigger than the on the original, I'll just do that. 
Then I'll put a smaller row in, some smaller lighter ones in, and that'll give it a little different look, a little, so you have a couple to choose from here. And again, I put a, um, a curved petal set on this one as well. Slightly curved, so it's you're looking at some petals that are that are that are lifted up slightly here. And if you get this, my I have this a little heavy right there. I'm just going to touch into some of my shadow, some shadow grays and some greens, and just dirty a shadow into my brush and lift out. Wipe your brush and lift out, and that will make that turn come out there. Uh, from the um, from the shadow, then I'll restate my center in here. Tap this center. I could state some of these centers. Tap those around again. That's kind of a pretty little unusual daisy there. I love that. Just get these variations to the looks here. I love that. Tap some of that around some of that around let's put um, this one that's over here I did kind of a, a short lifting a short lifting stroke here just lift it off immediately that puts a light little touch right out here at the ends of these guys here and then uh, we'll come back and you can just push in like this and soften that with your finger okay then I'll come back and Lift out of the center here. Let's get a little more blue into that. Lift out of the center like this with some uh, light, some shorter ones, shorter petals here like this. And that puts that light in here by the center, which is really where I want it, especially right here because we want that bird to, we want this to kind of fade away down here on this side. So that right in there like that, that work, looks pretty good. And then we'll cut a few look of that just come a cut right across the top of that like that and if you pull one slightly down it'll make it look like it's the petals coming at you there we'll just model that slightly soften it you can develop a little bit more light I could have a little bit more light out there like that develop that if you get it too light or something too much going on or something like that, you can always stroke back with the shadows like this to, to push those that color out and and remove some of that light. So it's very you can adjust it back and forth and paint what your little daisy needs. I am going to put just a little bit of light right in here, just a touch more. There we go. And let's just put a touch more light here and there to these. There, just like that. Just quick little strikes of it. And that will give each one of these their own little personality. Those quick little strikes of color. As you let happen, what happens on these, just gives them their own personality. This is what you want. Now, we'll come over here let's lighten up some of our greens we'll go let's go right back over here by our greens we'll get a little blue into that a little Hansa a little black grab some white into that let's make some pretty greens but again a little bit of blue into that because we have so much blue in the plate in the background here so put some of that in that's a bit light That was kind of long. You you play around in that color too long and you you lose it. <laughs> so I lost that. That's better. I like that one. And I'll come out here and let's brighten that just a bit more. You know, if you, you're not finding that color, I, I need to. That green has got to play against that blue. And so I really want this, but I don't like a real bright blue green. That's going to be a better one. I think I deserve a fresh paper towel here. That'll be a better one. Yeah, that'll be better. Yep, that's it right there. So I'll put some of that lighter green color on there. 
maybe strike some of this light through. Come in from the outside edge here like this, you know, draw the edge, and pull in. You, When you're painting leaves on anything, you should use the same types of techniques that you do on your flowers. Then you get the leaves and the flowers growing together. So basically I give the flowers an edge and then I'll pull in and that's what I'll use on these leaves. Give it a little edge and pull in. So I'll drop a little edge in and pull in, give that motion in. And that's all these leaves uh, really need here. Maybe drop a little feeling of some other stuff going on there. Here. Like that. A little edge. Pull in. Like that. Around. 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 Like this. And very casual. You can restate the shadows or restate any part of the leaf that you want. Now I've got these just a little bit close. I did on the original too, to be in the same color. So I'm just going to come through with a little bit more yellow and hit a few more. Just a little different. I, I mean, it, it's okay on the original and stuff, but I kind of, um, you know, I always get in the habit of, you know, it's one of my older habits. And I always tell my students, oh, you got that habit too. Some, some of my students have it. We paint the leaves all the same color. And so it hits all of us. And so it's one of the things I look for to come back and, and change within a painting. So I make sure I don't always get those same colored leaves out there. So let's put, let's put in a little more yellow and maybe pump this one a little different. Pump it up with some yellow. Here, so it's a little different. We'll add a few little accent strokes of that stuff out here as well. That'll change that up. Maybe add some little touches out here to the outside edge. Out here. That's a bit light out there, but I'm going to leave it. Sometimes you get the expression of color, and it might be just a little long, but the actual expression that you used in the painting is quite nice, so I just leave it. Now I'm going to take the corner. I'm going to leave that green in my brush. Take the corner with some Hansa. A little bit of white sometimes model in some of these other yellows here and I'm just going to use the corner of the brush with this and just tap in some centers to the daisies here and I'll go around first with this first color one side I'll tend to put on heavier like this and then just let it fade out and then after I get a couple of them on I'll come back and tap and soften them with with my finger I don't want to go all the way around to make a perfect circle or anything. I want to use maybe one side of it a little heavier there so it gets so it looks different. These back here just give a little bit soft here. Push and so that maybe not as much of a touch of those. You know, if you get too much tap tap in here, it brings it forward. So we want to keep it softer on these back ones. But this one can have a bit more because it's right here right in your right here so right there we'll tap I got a little much so I'll just tap some dark into it push some dark you know that's a beautiful thing it's all a prima put light put dark back in what you need there okay tap that around yeah that's pretty it's a little even maybe even put a little green right in there yeah, that's better. See, just a little even. Just take it off side. Just take a stroke or something and get rid of some of the evenness of it. You want a little variation in each one, which means each one will be a little different. That's what I look for. So I tap that in there, but it's all a little different. And we'll put some of that in there like that down there and that's good and um now i'm going to come right up here and let's go right up since i got a little bit of the blue left up here let's just dump some of this right up here some hansa a little bit of black i even hit a little red there i didn't mean to and that killed that green right away so let's just come right over here and we'll push that in it'll make a nice soft sometimes a little brownish color in there little softer uh, green color it can be any of those versions there 
and we'll extend it out with just a little extender and let's just come through and add some little uh, softer accents movement strokes um, this way I'll, I'll use my big brush sometimes I'll use the chisel and I'll, I'll paint in reverse and I'll come out and just kind of fill up the design here little movement strokes out um, I like to add little strokes out like this to the lighten up the area here maybe like a little calyx type of stroke there on a daisy you know fills up but it's just light and airy nothing perfect it's light and airy little strokes that's a dangerous one I just put by that bird because get strokes like that it can take away but it's soft enough it's not I just tap it with my finger a little just a little movement and keep the head of that bird you know let my as an area of interest there. And around like this. And uh, maybe shape this one. Since that daisy's so big, we'll shape a bigger leaf right there by it. And I'll just go around and add a few little accents and movements and, you know, just of the of the brush but this lightens up and airies the entire design here I'll put some over here now here now for the border I love this and you can push some of this around but I really kept it quite yellow up in this area like you had some you know roses and stuff showing up back here so I really like to pump up the yellows a little bit back down into here like you know there's more roses through I like that feeling of it there maybe a little bit here more model right there on the on his body coming down just a bit of interest so it you know you get a we want to keep it soft so it goes behind the rose but you can streak it just a bit there there we go that's good that's pretty nice that's pretty nice painting now for the outside edge here um what i did and it's what i usually do in a painting here at the end is you know and you've got to decide okay here i'm going to do this this entire painting here and I usually take all of my colors together, mix it all up, and I made kind of a, for the edge here, I made kind of a, a brown green here, a brownish green. And um, so it, it's it's really kind of your yellow and your black, and um, <clears throat> which makes the, the green. And then I added a little bit of the broke, but I have some blue up here. You can take some right in there. I'm going to do it off camera here just a bit for, I mean, or, or set it up here clean area I don't normally do that but and I'm going to use my knife here for a second to mix up so you can see so I get a green here like this okay and um, I uh, this green this nice yellow green and then the red the uh, a natural red light will warm it will brown it so you can see it starts to brown this up and the, as I build more and more and more of this red in here it will brown this up and warm it up here Okay, so you get this kind of real brown, warmer brown kind of tone here. And then you can add a tiny bit of white here, which, um, tiny bit of white, which will uh, lighten it up here and, and create the gray. So a tiny bit of light here, tiny bit of white will lighten it up and create the gray. So if it looks slightly red, that this one looks slightly red, just a touch redder than that, then just increase your green into that. Find one that works really well with your border. And then this is the dark color of the bird is on the bead here. And so when it's 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 best to paint that when it's really dry. Sometimes I'll slide those kind of colors all around there. But sometimes the best way is to mix up your whole palette. Now why I did it up here is I want to be able to for you to see a nice a, you know a nice uh, color of this palette. And we'll we'll try to remember to take a uh, 
photo of this palette so you can see some of my mottled yellows and stuff like that that I have on the palette. But once you find the color, I just take that and I'll lighten it up to kind of where I want. I, I model it up more. I don't like palette knife mixing like that. I just wanted to show you that. But I model the color up like that. And then I just go right around. I'll do the whole edge here like this first. Let me put a little extender with this so I can just go right around. I'll paint the inside bead of this plate. I love these plates. These plates are available from our studio. And I love these plates. Love them. As, as they are in lots of places, though. But you can, he'll fit on anything, you know. So let's step back just a bit here. So I'll go around, find a nice color that works, kind of works with them there. And uh, we'll go around, add the whole color, and then we'll uh, darken it down a little bit. The other thing you can do is, if you don't like the heavy color on the rim, and uh, you can just wipe it down with a paper towel afterwards, which will lighten them up. And matter of fact, maybe I'll show you on this one, because this one can be a little different. You know, I, I love to paint the birds and everything, and I love... I love painting in general, but, you know, I, I don't like, one of the things I don't like is repeating the same thing twice because that's not fun. And, and it's also because you can't. You can't make it exact, and it's not fun. And so I don't, I don't like painting something a second time, and so I like to add variations and changes to it. And that keeps the art very, very fresh, and it keeps me painting all the time, painting. So... I'll show you here. I'll put the color on like this, and then maybe you want to do something like this on your painting. You'll want to wipe it down with a paper towel uh, afterwards, which will bring back up some of the... And, and add just a real soft movement. So the one I did over there doesn't have this movement. It's nice, it's nice and clean like that. And then, you, if you want, you can take your paper towel like this, and what I do is I try not to stop because you'll leave a stop mark, but I'll just circle around like this, and that adds a little bit of lighter movement to you. Now, some of you will like that. Some of you will want to do the other way. So you have a, a solid one, and this lightly lift off as you go off, or you have one that has a, a rim like that. They're both pretty. You could even do, and then do the darker bird color, but you could do a darker green there also if you want it okay so there you have your painting a couple ways to do it leave it on a little more opaque or leave it on or, or put it in a little bit softer and wipe it down that looks kind of cool too okay thanks very much uh, for joining me here in the dance and art studio today look for more of our painted simply uh, dvds uh, on jansenartstore.com we have well over 500 lessons now to teach you using six colors and a few brushes. And again, if you have any kinds of questions, we have a forum over on globalartsupply.com where a lot of our teachers are, and you can join that forum. It's all free, and ask any kind of questions at any time about the Painted Simply. Make sure you also uh, visit paintedsimply.com for some of the latest updates in, in that particular program. So if you're looking for more stuff, just visit us on jansenartstudio.com. You'll have our email and contact information there. And at, all, at, at any time, you can write us, and uh, we'll get back to you just as soon as we can. So thanks for joining me uh, today. Hope you have a great painting day, and I'll see you next time here at the Jansen Art Studio. You take care. Bye-bye.